Uh, good morning everyone. Sa mga hindi pa po nakakilala sa akin, I am Joan Ico and I'm also with Diane Santilla and Mr. Jerickson Ko, the Sales and Marketing Manager of Wigbet Incorporated. And I'm also, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our participants then for this morning. Thank you po for your time. Uh, after the session po or the presentation, we also have a question and answer session na pwede po silang mag-ask ng question kay Ms. Olga. But before we begin, I would like to introduce to you our guest speaker, Ms. Olga Lazo. Okay, Ms. Olga has worked on research and development both in the food industry and academia for the past nine years. She earned her bachelor's degree in food technology from the University of Santo Tomas and master's degree in food science from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. In 2015, Ms. Olga has completed training on the best practices for food safety in the food service industry at Enderan Colleges in Taguig to be served safe certified on food protection manager certification. Currently, Ms. Lazo is a science research specialist at the UP College of Home Economics. And without, without further ado, let's, let's start this webinar. Ms. Olga, you may now start your presentation. Hello, good morning. So we're going to discuss um, food safety in home-based beverage processing part one. So the points of discussion will be the following. We will proceed to the main stages for root production, um, the storage and shelf life of juice, particularly the sources and occurrences of microbial that needs to be done. So let's define first what is fruit juice. So juice is the unfermented but fermentable juice obtained from ripe fruits, fruits usually by mechanical means. So citrus fruit juices are the most widely consumed and accounts for 50% juice in the international market. So what are the major steps? So the first is the receipt of raw materials washing and sorting, production of unpasteurized juice, repasteurization treatment, pasteurization, cooling, packaging, or bulk storage. Although you may have different products and corresponding processing steps, the following guidelines in ensuring that your product will be safe for human consumption. So first is the receipt of raw materials which involves obtaining the materials from certified suppliers and separation of fruits with molds and rot through visual inspection. Also, handling and storage must be done to prevent contamination of the raw materials. If the products will not be processed right away, fruits should be stored at refrigerated temperature or in a cool, dry place if the fruit is sensitive to chilling injury. Second is washing in running water to remove filth and other extraneous materials such as pests, uh, such as stalks or leaves. After washing in running water, a second washing is recommended to sanitize the surface of the fruits. Usual practice is by soaking the fruits in 100 to 200 ppm chlorinated water for 1 to 5 minutes. Now, while the raw materials are being washed in chlorinated water, the packaging materials should also be cleaned prior to processing. Containers used for beverages uh, include returnable glass bottles, PET bottles, and cans. So, glass bottles, especially those that were returnable and are already used, are cleaned using an alkali solution, usually using hydro sodium hydroxide. As recommended by Levine, Cleaning of glass bottles must be done using 3% alkali solution for a minimum of 5 minutes at temperatures greater than 55 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, PET bottles are not required to be cleaned as they are usually new newly manufactured and non-returnable. So, PET bottles are only rinsed with ultra-filtered or chlorinated water. In the industry, PET bottles bottles that are sourced from certified bottle suppliers such as Philpet are usually cleaned in these 
and the bottle caps are first washed with with soap and water, then rinsed. After washing with soap and water, the bottles are soaked in 50 ppm chlorinated water for five minutes. Then after soaking, the chlorinated water chlorinated water should be removed and the uh, the bottles and the bottle caps are air dried. Then the bottles are subjected to UV lamp or UV for two hours. The third juice processing step is the extraction of unpasteurized juice and the extraction process depends on the fruit and desired product outcome. The fourth step is the pre-pasteurization treatment or any treatment done prior to pasteurization. So examples are preheating for the aeration which is usually done in orange juice in Greece. Also, the addition of ascorbic acid, citric acid, and other food additives as preservative for the product. Also, filtration and clarification. The fifth step is pasteurization, which primarily destroys the pathogenic and spoilage microorganisms present in the unpasteurized ju juice, which in turn preserves the product and extends its shelf life. The most widely used pasteurization method in non-alcoholic beverages is, is HTSP, which is high temperature short time, and um, usually done at 85 to 95 degrees Celsius for 4 to 20 seconds. Remember that pasteurization step is a critical control point or CCP in juice production or any beverage production, and the process schedules is specific to your product and should be strictly followed. No shortcuts. So the sixth step is juice production, uh, which in juice production, which is cooling, wherein the juice is rapidly cooled down within 30 to 40 seconds, after which the product is immediately packaged. The main processing methods for juices and soft drinks. There are four main processing methods. So there's pasteurization, hot filling, impact pasteurization and aseptic filling. Flash pasteurization is done by generally heating the raw juice in a heat exchanger to the desired temperature for a speci specified time before being cooled to filling temperature using cold chilled water. So pasteurization conditions usually use temperatures between 85 to 95 degrees Celsius with holding times varying between 15 to 60 seconds. So hot filling. On the other hand, uh, hot filling is done by heating the raw juice in a heat exchanger, sending to the filler hot and filled into containers hot. So the containers are closed and held at or above the required temperature for a specified time prior to being cooled, usually in a tunnel with water sprays. Usual field temperature is around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. The filled containers will be held for the required time before being placed in a hydrocooler. So it is cooled to below 25 degrees Celsius before, before being stacked. Impact pasteurization is the most severe and the most microbiological secure form of heat treatment. As the completely filled pack is put into the tunnel pasteurizer. So for small scale operations, Impact pasteurization can be achieved at very low cost by simply immersing the bottle product with closures tightly applied in tanks of heated water. A preheat tank at around 40 degrees Celsius should be employed to minimize thermal shock to the containers. And the main pasteurizing tank will be held at 70 degrees Celsius. So typical con pasteurizing conditions in impact pasteurization is 70 to 75 degrees for up to 20 minutes. A septic filling is a special case of flash pasteurization. It is required that in a septic filling, all utensils, equipment, and environment are sterile. Thus, this operation takes place in an enclosed environment overpressured with sterile air. There is also what we call as cold filling. So, based on studies, cold filling has assurance of being microbiological stable due to extensive use of preservatives such as sodium benzoate or potassium sorbate and lowering of pH and adjustment of titratable acidity and total soluble solids, solids in, as expressed as bricks. So the last step in fruit juice production is the packaging or bulk storage, where the importance of use 
of appropriate packaging materials free from contaminants comes in. Storage conditions in terms of temperature and relative humidity must be controlled to preserve the quality of the product. So for the storage and shelf life, fruit juice, due to its high sugars and uh, high sugar content, is highly susceptible to fermentation and microbial foliage. It is important that some form of pasteurization is employed when these products are packaged. They should be maintained by storage at temperatures between 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. So refrigerated temperature. So for the shelf life of beverage products, especially juices, uh, it actually depends on the pasteurization and packing process used. So long life juices can be kept up to 6 to 12 months if packaging is kept intact and sealed. And this does not require chilling. So high room temp now. As long as intact yung packaging. Short life juices can be kept for up to 30 days and must be kept chilled. And unpasteurized fruit juices can be kept not more than 14 days. And dapat mabigay sa um, consumers ng fresh. So yung spoilage uh, signs, signs of spoilage in juice are here. Yung the under po ng column ng the effects. So, uh, there will be, pag spoiled na yung, or pag sira na yung juice, so, merong turbidity, fermentation, so, fermentation, maamoy, ganyan. Sour or off taste, buttermilk, off flavor, gummy slime, tapos merong acetic acid or carbon dioxide um, production or air bubbles. Then, there's uh, phenolic or antiseptic odor, so, parang, fermentation. Din. Then, increased acidity, gas, strong butyric odor. So, food safety and beverage processing. So, um, i-mention ko lang po dito yung do's and don'ts for uh, sa production ng kahit ano pong food. The processing steps involved in microbial contamination of non-alcoholic beverages. Uh, the reason why I mentioned the, the processing steps a while ago kasi in each process, uh, hindi naman lahat critical, pero dapat, dapat malinis, dapat safe lahat ng process. So, in fruit or vegetable drinks, occurrence of microbial contamination can occur in the raw material, the water use, harvest, and the inefficient heat treatment. So, these are the associated microorganisms for fruit and vegetable drinks. For carbonated or non-carbonated soft drinks, the important processing steps are the ingredients, post-cooling, and packing. For tea-based drinks, raw materials, ingredients, and inefficient heat treatment. So for dairy drinks, similar, raw materials and ingredients. So that's the reason why the ingredients should be um, sourced from certified suppliers. Then, there should be efficient heat treatment na specific for the product. There are what we call um, regul uh, food safety standards and policies and regulations. Kasama po doon yung SSOPs, GMP, and HACCP. So, SSOPs are written program and procedures to ensure sanitary conditions in the food plant. So, these are the written program and procedures for cleaning techniques used in the food processing facility. So, main objective of, of SSOP is to allow production of wholesome and safe food. There's also the current good manufacturing practices, or what we call as GMP. So, these are the general rules of sanitation designed to control the risk of contamination of food with filth, chemicals, pathogenic microorganisms, and other means during manufacture. So, this address issues on personal hygiene and cleanliness among workers who handle the food, the suitability of the plant design, the sanitary operations, and the cleaning of food contact surfaces. So, the personnel um, for disease control. So, any person who appears to have Ill illness or wounds shall be excluded from any operations until the injury is protected by waterproof covering or the condition is corrected. We should make sure that lahat ng contact sa food, walang sugat, walang may sakit. Kasi um, we know that sa wounds, makukuha yung staphylococcus aureus. 
which can cause food poisoning. For cleanliness, the personnel should wear outer garments or prawn, lab gown, or hair net, face mask, suitable to the operation. Dapat naliligo din siya, so maintaining personal hygiene. Washing hands thoroughly before starting work after each absence from the workstation and at any other time when the hands may have been com- become contaminated. So, pag nagpunta na CR, syempre dapat magwash the hands before going back to the processing facility. So, removing all unsecured jewelry, bawal ang mga jewelries, and we should wear gloves during food handling. Um, personal belongings in should be stored in areas other than where the food is exposed. So, dapat may lockers or um, example, cell phone, dapat hindi siya nandun sa processing area. The following activity should not be done in the food handling or processing area. So, bawal kumain, chewing gum, bawal, drinking beverage, bawal, and of course, bawal manigarilyo. Yun lang po yung kinuha ko dun sa GMT, pero mahaba po siya. So, buong plant, oper, uh, process, ano yun, process and controls, meron po dun. So, hazard analysis critical control point. So, is what we call as HACCP. So, it's a system of preventive controls that is designed to identify, to identify and manage conditions where hazards could be present in the product while it is still being processed. So, what we mean by hazard, these are the biological, physical, and chemical hazards. So, um, physical hazards, example, are, example is metals, glass, mga shards or kaya hair. So, chemical, so, pwedeng disinfectant na lagay sa food. Yan yung mga hazard. Then, biological, so, these are microorganisms. So, HACCP focuses on prevention rather than relying mainly on end product testing. So, it is unique and product specific and must ref- reflect the type of product, method of processing, packaging, the facility in which it is prepared, and the intended consumers. It is not a standalone program. So, actually, HACCP is the parang high, hindi naman highest, pero we need the GMP and SSOPs to be in place first before doing the HACCP. So, foundation yung GMP and SSOP. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Olga, for the presentation. And now, uh, the question and answer session is now open. Kung sino po yung mga may question, pwede pong mag-raise ng hand, tapos i-unmute po na lang po. Oh, sige. Ma'am, tanongin ko lang, simulan ko lang muna, if, I, if you don't mind. Uh, yung save, yung sinisave natin, eh, yung, sorry, yung sinasuggest natin, Ms. Olga, na storage nila kapag ganito, unpasteurized beverage which I'm going to assume that most of our new clients will be unpasteurized beverages. No? Uh, what storage condition was that? Was that uh, like refrigerated or room temp? Actually, we have what we call as temperature danger zone. Um, what is the temperature danger zone? This is actually very important for, for these guys. Yeah. yeah. So, yung 5 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. So, yung hot food should be kept hot. So, at, above, or, at or above 60 degrees Celsius. Cold food should be cold. So, should be below 5 degrees Celsius. And frozen should be keep, kept frozen. So, yun po. Ito yung mahalagang part na dapat hindi natin ma-temp abuse or ma- um, na expose yung products sa temperature danger zone if unpasteurized. Kasi okay, I'd like to clarify. Danger. I'd like to clarify this to our viewers, no. Uh, this danger zone, uh, pwedeng dumaan dyan yung produkto. Halimbawa, habang mainit siya, it could pass that. But the longer it spends taking, say, from pinakuloan natin to 88 degrees over 20 minutes, so it's yung 75 for the pasteurized, and then pupunta siya to 4 degrees, uh, the longer it spends there, the more fermentation that will happen. 
and it gets the more dangerous for it is for the product or the shorter the shelf life is. So it's always ideal at this point that there are some systems that I've seen on home na after pinakuloan nila yung produkto, whether it's a milk tea, a fruit juice, or any other beverage, after kumulo, you dump it into, or the container itself, you put on a bucket of ice, so it rapidly cools, and with a lot of ice, so it rapidly cools. Uh, so the short, uh, sorry, so it rapidly cools, and it, it, it passes through that danger zone much quicker. And the longer, the, the, the shorter time it spends on the danger zone, it's always much better for your product. Ngayon, ideally, pinapasteurize nga or hina hot fill or hina aseptic, but things are less than ideal right now naman talaga. Okay, uh, is there any other question to our viewers? Ms. Geraldine? Unmute. Hello? Okay. Yeah, regarding sa, you were saying na uh, once you rinse the bottle, cups, the, the bottle and the cups, and then you need to use UV lamp for two hours, uh, hindi ba siya makaka-affect sa quality ng final product using UV lamp? Kasi we've tried this sa VCO, uh, nag-iiba yung quality niya eh. Sa juice kaya? Uh, Ma'am, yung get nagawa niyo po ba is, as in, ikiklean po. So, wala pa naman yung mote. Pag niyubi Ay, niyo po. Ano na siya? Final step na uh, nakapak na tapos pinapadaan na lang sa UV lamp. Uh, Ma'am, I can I can attest. I think what we were mentioning, what she mentioned before was UV before you fill the product. Um, no, for the VCO, filled na siya. Tapos ah. pinapadaan naman sa UV. So, nagkaroon ng konting uh, pagbabago sa quality. But for this uh, beverage sa juice, so you were saying bago i-fill, i-UV lamp siya for two hours. Uh, correct. Actually, two hours might be a bit aggressive. So, I know oh, modern gosh. filling lines, uh, Olga, correct me if I'm wrong, no? but modern filling lines right now actually process a UV on the cap na lang. Because it gets filled immediately. So what happens is, while the, the preform or say the resin is hot, binoblow nila, then sa kanila lalagay yung produkto. At the same time, there's a side machine that exposes the caps to a UV lamp right very, very direct contact. And that takes about 10 seconds silang expose mm -hmm. a UV lamp and then papasok. Ma'am, I can tell you that if you apply UV lamps or UV light to the product after it's filled, the bottle will be okay. Your product will not. Any form of UV uh, to any product from beverage to alcohol will actually change the color of it. Particularly, this is why like some companies add a citric acid to orange juice. Kasi para yung citric acid muna yung magba-brown before the orange, the citric acid in the orange juice browns. Yeah. So do not expose your product to UV. Expose the package to UV and that's okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. I have another question, sir. Uh, regarding sa paglilinis ng bote, kasi uh, sinasuggest na you, we just rinse the bottle cups, uh, soap and water, tapos sa chlorinated, then air dry. How about yung pinaka bote niya? Do we need to clean it? Kasi ang ano kasi, minsan hindi siya natutuyo maigi na air dry. So may mga nagkakaroon ng moist dahil sa water. Anong suggestion okay. nyo dito? Sige. Uh, Olga, I think you had a slide for that. Can you take this and then I'll answer on what Philpet does? So, yung um, question po is, minsan may natitira during air dry? Mm -hmm. um, merong iba sa amin po. Actually, kasi um, sa, sa planta namin, which is sa, sa university, minsan pinapainitan po namin sa cabinet dryer. Pero mainit, medyo makabang ano lang. Anong sa temperature yun? <laughs> sa amin lang po. Ah. Pero, hindi ko alam sa industry. I'm not sure. Temperature, maybe 35, 37. Ah, nice. uh, 40. It's actually fine. Yes po. Okay. Sir, kayo po. Okay. Uh, so, 
on experience ng ibang customers namin, they use something called a, a no rinse uh, a no rinse solution for this. Uh, the typical equipment is something called uh, the typical chemical is called star sand. I know coal industry sells that here. Uh, ideally, yung hinuhugasan lang naman natin ng ultra filtered or chlorine ultra filtered or chlorinated water is if na iwan nating bukas yung produkto. What we do sa planta po is as soon as it comes out, we have a team na nakamaskara at nakagloves na nilalagay po yung mga bote into the uh, into the packaging line. Ngayon, uh, I, that's not as ideal as say a machine. Uh, yung caps natin ngayon, walang gumag, walang nagkahawak na tao eh. Uh, cap, and, and lang talaga yun eh. Uh, machine lang talaga yun. Uh, but it's as clean as it could be without having to clean, without having to rinse it na. Uh, coming from experience, if you open, if you leave the package open, that's when dust might come in or any other bacteria. Uh, but it's no more dangerous. Wait, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna allow Olga to interrupt me here. But it's no more dangerous than say, ang bas or yung pinggan or yung kuchara nyo na iniwang na nakalagay sa cupboard. Uh, that being said, it's still you're still dealing with bacteria that's uncontrolled. So, yung pagpapatuyo, uh, upside down would be good or a uh, nitrogen canister that can blow out the air and that can blow out the liquid through. That's also, I, I've seen people do that para tanggalin lang yung hangin. Eh, tanggalin lang yung earrings out lang yung tubig. But honestly, maybe the best solution would be star sand if talagang requirement na linisin. Uh, yeah, the, the the best I know in the in the business is star sand. This is what beer brewing companies use to actually clean their bottles after they've okay. they've like boiled the hell out of it. Okay, thank you. Oh. Sir, pwede magtanong <laughs> about sand. Gano ka tagal po yung um, yung star sand. Inaan, po. Yung star sand. Uh, I'm going by beer brewing books. They leave it na about 10 minutes and then rinse. And then these are no rinse products na. Naging advertisement pa ako kay, at Coal mm -hmm. Industries, but these guys are actually very, very good. Uh, yun, Coal Industries, I know, sells that. Or tiisin nyo lang na lininisin yung bote and tutuyuin with a clean microfiber cloth that you have to go through. Mahirap naman yun. Uh, any other questions? Hello, Mam Izel. Mam Izel. On chat na lang. Hello. Hindi talaga. Hindi talaga. Uh, Hello, pa. Uh, sige, while you chat, Joanne, while you chat her, uh, can I raise a question to Miss Olga? I chat na lang muna natin yung question ni Miss Hazel. It might, it might be better. Right? Okay. Ma'am Olga, we talked about, you, you touched on dairy. Uh, including, say, would, would this affect like creamer product as well? Let's say, milk tea products na gatas and then say, hydrogenated creamers uh, or hydrogenated fats for creamer product. Um, after they pasteurize, or ano yung pasteurization level for, say, ano, uh, dairy products ba? Is it the same temperature? Usually, for dairy products, as nakikita po natin sa mga milk, it's uh, HTSP, so normal. I'm not sure with creamers, sir. For milk, yeah, it's the same, 85 to 95 for short period of time, seconds okay. only. So typical that so a good broad generalization for most of the small businesses that are buying from Philpit right now and they want to make money but also keep uh, make sure that their products are safe would be sell it within seven days and keep your product refrigerated anytime. While you're processing as well, anytime you're between 5 to 60 degrees centigrade is danger zone. So remove, move your product either 
to the hot side or to the cold side as quickly as humanly possible. Is that like a good general benchmark? And then if possible, clean with a, uh, what's the, what's the uh, PPMs of the, I'm sorry, what's the PPM of the chlorinated water? Or an opposer. Yung uh, cleaning. For yeah, cleaning, yung cleaning solution. Or sorry, caustic soda or chlorinated water. Uh, oh, naghang wait ba? Kasi ang lija is like, our liha is what? 10% sodium bicarbonate or no, sorry, sorry, sodium carbonate. Tama ba? So I'm, I'm curious lang na what's a better home solution for that? Is it Maybe baking soda or lija <laughs> or actual chlorine bleach. I mean, probably chlorine. Well, I think mura ang chlorine. Kasi ano lang ppm lang. So usually, uh, tablespoon lang siya. Depende dun sa ppm. Tablespoon and water. Okay. I think it's better po. Hindi ko po maano. Pero ayan. So, yung PET bottles, 50 ppm po. 50 parts per million. That means it's, uh, no, uh, let me do my quick math here. That's like 5 grams for per liter, ba? 50 divided by 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. So, that's 0 0.05 ml per liter. Yes. So sa isang galon is 20.2 grams. So baka mas maganda na gumawa ng mas malaking batch kung may scales sana yung mga customers natin. In the 0 0.05 ml is ridiculously hard to measure. Uh, <laughs> if, 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 yeah, for customers. That's ridiculously hard to measure. Uh, the equivalent of that is uh, 5 ml or let's say, yeah, so dropper natin, 5 ml for 100,000 liters. Eh, 100,000, tama, parts per million. 50. 50 ml for 1 million liters is 5 ml for 100,000 liters. Yes. Mababa lang po. Okay. So, ang ginagawa so, namin po is uh, sa plant ba? Uh, or sa school. Ginagawa namin is gagawa kami ng concentrated like siguro 200 ppm. Tapos, i-ano-ano uh, lang po namin ng tubig. Dadalute-dalute namin until maka-ano na 50. Are there machines or That's is there like way. a device to check kung tama or sufficient na... Is there a... Sorry, baka mas magandang tanong. Is there a danger for overchlorination? There's a ridiculously high danger yes. for chlorination. Kasi nagre meron pong residue yan eh. So, better stick po dun sa mga medyo dito mababa. Since ito naman po yung bigay ng FDA din. Okay. Uh, Overchlorination is also very dangerous. Yes. Residue. Okay. Residue okay. is dangerous. Okay. At the 50 parts per million, how dangerous is it? Um, hindi po siya dangerous kasi dito. Yun na po yung yan, ano eh, i-stay tapos i-air dry. So, probably uh, wala na siyang residue. So, mababa, mababa po siya masyad for okay. residue. Okay. So, that's actually a very important point as well na uh, to all our viewers. Um, you should really invest on a good scale. There would be scales to do uh, 100 ml and above, pero yung scale na pang jamante, the ones that it can actually measure carats or 0 0.01 gram of a product, those are actually very important and pipettes, uh, specifically for chlorine, so you can actually get 0 0.005 of an ml or gram per million, per one liter of your cleanser or to that range. So okay, po, grad graduated Sorry. cylinder po. Pwede graduated din. cylinder. Apa. Sige, sa bambang lahat yon. if you guys are free, if you guys have the, no, those are actually very important. Uh, and it's, I know that's not very expensive, but it's important that you guys know the, 
the, the, the, what, what, we, what we need to keep safe. Uh, do we have one last question from si Ms. Hazel? Nagtanong na po ba siya? Yes, na. Chinad na lang ni Ms. Hazel yung question niya. So, ito yung question niya. Uh, yung drinks kasi namin, may jelly at tapioca po. Minsan po, kasi tumatagal yung drinks namin, two days, pero yung texture po ng tapioca at jelly, nag-iiba. Ano po ba ang dapat namin gawin? Salamat. Nag-hydrate yung jelly, yung, tap, yung starch. Um, I'm not sure po sa ano eh, sa ganyan product na. Yeah. Ah, siguro po kailangan po ng mga ibang food additives na ilagay. Like, uh, di ba, example po, mogu-mogu. Yung mga stabilizer po, pwede sigurong idagdag doon sa ano niyo po, formulation. Baka po mag, ano to, mag-improve yung product. Pero, given na um, iba-iba po yung uh, ingredients niya, yun nga po, di ba sabi niyo, may tapioca, may jelly. So, probably, mataas po talaga yung pwedeng contamination niya, kaya mababa din talaga yung shelf life. Okay. Uh, Miss Hazel, if I may, I think it might be better for you to keep it separate muna. Uh, kasi mag-hydrate, starch yan eh. Uh, kahit, anong, kahit anong moisture sa uh, ano, kukunin nila. Kumbaga parang yung cellphone nyo nabasa ibababa nyo sa kanin. Uh, yun din yung similar na kukunin at kukunin nila yung any form of liquid, na, eh, any form of moisture na nasa hangin. And it will really affect the flavor. So, and the texture. So unless it's a non-hydro colloid yung gagamitin niyo po. Tulad ng nata de coco, uh, hindi naman po siya uh, it's a fermented gel rather than a hydro colloid na pinag na nagkakapit bisig po yung mga gelatin saka sa tubig. Uh, talagang magbabago yung texture po niya. So keep it separated and have the customer consume it or baka mas maganda is kung matagal pang iinumin po nung customer, baka nakahiwalay na lang po yung uh, tapioca or sa kayong gel, sa kayong assemble po nila. Kasi wala pong, uh, kung tapioca na standard lang na ginagamit sa mga milk tea, hindi po siya tatagal lagpas ng mga ganyang 48 hours. Okay. Uh, Miss Mia or Sir Robin Samson, may question po ba sila with regards to ice tea, cold peeling? Okay na tayo. Ah, wala okay. naman yung isang question. Okay. Sige, if you don't have any questions, this is the end of our webinar today. For our next webinar for Wednesday, yeah, June 17, Part 2 of Food Safety and Home-Based Beverage Processing. June 17, 1 p.m. So, thank you participants for joining us. Uh, we hope that you learn from our speaker. Okay. If you have other questions, you may email it to our uh, email address at seals at Thank you. Ms. Olga, thank you very much. Uh, guys, I hope this was very, very informative. Uh, this is informative. Uh, thank you very much. And we'll continue to do this while the pandemic's here to support um, ng customers ng Philpet. And we, we're, like what we say, we're here to protect you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you and stay safe, Thank you. everyone. Bye.